Hi, I'm Deanna Hollingsworth Gessler. I'm a travel writer, an artist, and I do illustrated travel journals, happily using Sakura products in my journaling all over the world. Journals like this and pages like this, charming illustrated pages, and I'm going to show you how to do this one today. So let's get started. I like to travel light, and Sakura products are perfect for the way I travel because I do illustrated travel journaling, and everything I use in their products fits right in this little pack that goes right into my purse. For instance, I carry this wonderful, wonderful uh, watercolor kit. Uh, it was designed by a genius. Everything works perfectly, even has purple. Now they also have another kit. If you really like to travel a little bit lighter than I do, this is a beautiful little kit too. It's a 12 watercolor kit. And you can see how much smaller it is, but it's just as efficient. The other thing I love to travel with the Sakura products is their pens. The Micron pens that range from 005 to 08. They come in this package and it's a good thing to always carry several of the pens with you when you travel. And again, they all fit into this little kit. Another thing that I like to carry with me at all times is a handy wipe. They dry very quickly and again, it fits into your little bag. I was in France teaching a workshop and uh, first night of the workshop, on the table appeared this jug of water that has rosemary, lime, and oranges in it. It was not only delicious, but it was beautiful. First we started out drawing the jug. Very simple. We're due to get on a bus pretty soon. We're going to another French village. We don't have a lot of time. That's what journaling's all about. It's, it's not rushing, but it's not about laboring over your artwork. So I'm going to do this nice rim at the top. That gives us some color. But you notice I'm not going to paint the whole handle here. I'm just painting a portion of it and it gives a highlight. A rosemary sprig, and remember we're simplifying for the sake of sketching. The stem, it could be purple. <laughs> or another color. I like that I used another color. That's not a mistake, that's kind of fun. It gives it more color. The leaves grow up, and that's how you know it's a rosemary. If I painted the leaves growing down, it wouldn't be recognizable. And look how I've changed all these colors. So I have some rosemary in there now. And what else is in there? There's oranges. These water brushes are perfect for drawing. You don't need to use a pen all the time. You can draw with a brush. And there's limes in there too. Now a lime is a little bit different color than that olive green. Too much water, that was a good example of too much water coming up. Oh, look what happened, that's great. That's a wonderful mistake. I like watercolors because they do make mistakes. That's great, I like that. Now we gotta put water in. Blue is basically representative of water, so we can make it very easy because again, this is not a painting, it's a sketch. So we don't have to put all of the water in. We can just do a few lines to indicate that there's some blue water in there. Now to house the information, I'm gonna put a little border here and with watercolor, you work from light to dark. So if we use yellow, then I can put a darker color on top. It's wet, so it's bleeding a little bit. That's fine. But I'm having a good time. That's the important part. There's two recipes here, actually. That's only one of them. The second recipe includes mint. And we're gonna put that over here in the corner Again, we're talking about layout and design here. So it's just making this journal page a little bit more interesting, giving a little pizzazz. One of the other parts of this exercise is learning to do a little calligraphy. And the title of this recipe was called Inviting Waters. 
So I decided I'm going to put the recipe here and I'm going to put the title at the top. So it's called Inviting Waters. I'm going to do just a plain eye. But then I'm going to get a lot of fun. I do what will I call bubblegum calligraphy. So all it is is lowercase printing and just put bubbles at the end of each line. And waters. Now all of a sudden I might have run out of a little space. That's okay. I'm going to write it in script instead because I know in script it'll fit. We want to fill in this eye on inviting. I'm going to start with a little light yellow at the top because we got the yellow going on here at the bottom. And I'm going to let the little red kind of bleed up into that. And the other thing I like to do is cast shadows. Cast shadows are a lot of fun. First of all, I'm going to put one on the pitcher of water so it sits down. And it just Somehow it just adds something to the journal. I'll put a little purple in here too, a little blue and purple. And I'm going to use the same blue and purple down here to make a cast shadow for the mint leaf to make it look like it's sitting here just resting on the page kind of a dimensional thing and see how much excitement that adds to that so I'm going to write out the first recipe and it is what we had pictured here Second recipe, and I need a new bullet. Remember, we're going to change colors a little bit here. Is sliced ginger, mint, and cucumber. Oh, that sounds very delicious. And that's the end of our lesson. Now, I had this in my own journal. When you work small in the journals, they tend to be a lot more charming rather than working large in your sketchbooks. So I encourage you to uh, get the smaller journals uh, Canson or Strathmore makes these journals. They fit right into your purse. They're great for traveling. And um, I just encourage you to keep on traveling and keep on journaling.